Hey, it's that Pat guy again, and yeah, he's going to introduce you to somebody that you've met before. So I'll reintroduce you to Andy Berlin. It's been a long time since you've been here on the show, food critic for the Arizona Republic. And Andy, as many times as I've been privileged to talk to professionals about writing, about dining, and quality food, here's one I've never asked one. I'm going to ask you. Uh-oh. Are you a good cook? <laughs> I like to think so, but I cook some weird stuff. Like what? <laughs> Last night, you, you know what I'm getting into now? Because I eat out a lot, I have a lot of leftovers. So I incorporate the leftovers into new dishes. I've made it an art. Give it's me my an art. example of mixing up leftovers. So I had Ethiopian food, I can't tell you where because it's under wraps. No, right, but boy, that's that's neat. And it's the dipping with the bread. Yeah, with the injera bread. Yeah. Love it, right? But I had leftovers. What you do when you have Ethiopian food leftovers, you roll it and make a big bread stew kind of burrito, right? So I had this leftovers in my fridge, put it in a bowl. I actually microwaved this one, sorry. <laughs> But I fried an egg on top, so I had like a runny egg on top of the Ethiopian. Just experimenting, right? Yeah, it, it made no sense, but it was really good. You know, folks are making notes right now. <laughs> Say, wait a minute, if Andy Berlin can do this, I'm going to try it myself. <laughs> but no, that's terrific to know that's what you do at home. Yeah. Um, you're, you're a Chandler girl, originally mm -hmm. from Chandler. Uh, went to school at U of A, so mm -hmm. you dine Tucson and the Valley and a lot of other places too. But what was the first memorable restaurant experience that you had, even as a child? Oh, man. Is there is there one that you can remember, wow, this is what it's like eating out? My first memory, I remember it, I was in a dim sum restaurant in California and I remember being on the floor. I think I was in like a baby carriage or something. And you were watching them with the carts going Yeah, by. I remember dim sum from being like three years old. That's like my first memory. Isn't that weird? <laughs> No, no, weird is the egg on top of the leftovers. Yeah, that's uh, the Ethiopian egg. Uh, but you, uh, <laughs> you, you have such a terrific job, and everybody envies you. Uh, do they know about the pressure of being recognized when you go into a restaurant and the chef or the manager knows you're there to probably do a review in the Arizona Republic of their stuff? Are they tempted to do maybe special stuff for the reviewer? Yeah, it doesn't happen as often as you'd think because the kind of restaurants that I enjoy going to are like the Ethiopian restaurants, the yeah. Chinese restaurants, sure. you know, and those people don't always recognize me. Happened a lot more when I was a food critic in Tucson, but Phoenix is so much bigger, there's so much going on that I don't always get recognized, but, but yeah. You do, but if you do get kind of extra special service, uh, do you then let that turn your head or is that a negative? I think, well, first of all, I don't like extra special, special service. It makes me feel uncomfortable when I can tell that I'm being watched, you know, it's not a positive thing for me. But yeah, it does happen sometimes. And I just have to kind of acknowledge that. That's just what's gonna happen every once in a while. Okay, you know? so you go so, into a new restaurant. Are you assigned to a restaurant or do you pick it? I mostly pick it. I talk to my editor, I tell her, I tell the team, the dining team, what I love, what I'm interested in, and then we kind of come up with it together, but yeah, it's mostly mostly places that I love, okay. you know. What's the first consideration when you go into a new restaurant? The ambiance of, of the restaurant itself, uh, the service, the food, or something else? I think number it's, one. Ooh, number one. I think it has to be interesting. That's my number one. Is this interesting to people? The place I, itself. Yeah, I want to I want to tell a story. I want I want people that read my articles to know a little bit more about our dining scene and our culture. And they might not necessarily even have to eat at that restaurant, but I want to tell I just want to tell them something interesting about our city. Okay. About living here and eating here. And since you have a broad range of tastes, the most interesting cuisine and the least interesting cuisine. <laughs> I don't know if I could say that. Well, no, you have to because the law is outside right now. <laughs> really. 
the most interesting cuisine is the one that I'm currently obsessing over. It changes every week. Okay, right now. Right now, <laughs> right this time now, in your life. Right now? Um, I would say I've been obsessing over Mexican food, Sonoran Mexican food, mm -hmm. and how it ties into a certain epic in filmmaking called La Epica de Oro, which is a, is a, it's the golden age of Mexican cinema, right? I'm not going to say what restaurant I'm talking about, but if you know about the latest restaurants, you might have been here. It's a restaurant that ties in the cuisine of Sonora and the golden age of Mexican cinema. Wow. See, and people think you just sit down at the, at the computer <laughs> and dash something off about a burger joint and that's it and you get free food because uh, the newspaper <laughs> pays for it. It's a little bit more involved with Andy Berlin. To find out the least interesting cuisine, you'll have to wait either for that column or the next time she visits this program. <laughs> I thank you for visiting yourself.